So you're about to go into a meeting physically or remotely, you click on the team on the calendar invite and it'll pull up the culture of that meeting. Imagine EQ everywhere where you're delivering emotional intelligent insights where every person can communicate, collaborate, and connect. Don't conduct your analysis in isolation because data is so incredibly powerful. Not defending just the tribe, but defending the organization. Those creative people that you really want to keep empowered, keep excited, keep motivated, keep thinking. A good experience pays dividends down the line. Stereotypes tend to break down in proximity. Welcome to We're Only Human, a podcast about human resources, business, technology, and the workplace. My name is Ben Eubanks, your host, and I'm so glad you're here. Hey, this is Ben. Just a quick note for you today. I am so thankful for you as a listener. So thankful for the time that I get to share with you, the ideas, the conversations with these amazing guests for the last four plus years. I'm so, so thankful for this. And I hope that this week you'll take a moment to be thankful too for whatever it is you're thankful for. Your your health, your friends, your family, your the work you get to do, a great book you read, your pet, your it doesn't matter to me. Find something to be thankful for, and if it's a person, tell them. If it's your pet, nah, give them a hug. doesn't matter. Let them know and just share some gratitude with the world. It's a good, it's a good practice broadly, and this week I, I'm again, thankful for that reminder in my own personal life. I'm thankful for, for rambunctious kids that keep me uh, young. I feel old, but they keep me young, I think. For an amazing wife of, of all these years, for the work I get to do here, for just great people I'm connected to, and again, for you, for listening in, for chiming in, for sharing your thoughts, for asking questions, for the, those of you that have pinged me on LinkedIn or via email to say that you listen to the show, I appreciate that so much. You'll never know, you'll never know how much that matters, especially this year when it's easy to feel disconnected from everything else. So today's episode... I'm interviewing Juan Betancourt from Human Intelligence. We're talking about things like understanding and connecting to and caring about the people around us. So as you're listening to this, I hope that that kind of ties in again with this broader spirit of thankfulness and appreciation. I hope you enjoy the conversation with Juan. He is super sharp. He talks fast. He's just an energetic person. And so hopefully some energy will rub off on you today. I thank you so much again for listening. Appreciate you. Hey everyone, Ben Eubanks here. Welcome to We Are Only Human, and I am so glad to have you. I'm excited for the conversation today. I've been talking to Juan Betancourt over at Human Intelligence for a couple of years now, on and off, seeing our events, things like that, which seems like a, a million years ago now. And I realized like we had never had a conversation that everyone else can hear. So I'm excited today to, to have one of those, those engaging, dynamic discussions and allow each of you to listen in, learn some things from him, how they're serving their, their customers, some of the things he's seeing in the space. So Juan, welcome to the show, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Hey, I'm so glad to have you again. And I'll ask you in a little bit to tell your story because I, that sticks out to me. And I have retold your story several times to other people over the years to illustrate the work that you do. But before we get into that, why don't you kick us off? Tell us who you are and what you do. Yeah, so I'm the CEO of Human Intelligence. We are known as the Culture Software. It's a CAS platform. Everyone's familiar with SaaS. This is CAS with a C, Culture as a Service. And we allow companies to measure, manage, and hire for culture. The benefits being that we can help any company improve their performance in any role, team, division, or site. We can help them reduce turnover. We can help them align culture to strategy. So for instance, if they're now, let's say a, a random pandemic hits the world and God knows we all have to work from home. Let's say that crazy story happens. <laughs> yeah, you, could actually, you could actually manage your company and the culture to be able to work remotely better given the psychology of your employees and who would work better and, and who would not from remote. And you can also manage to a culture of diversity of thought to lead to more diverse outcomes and get away from affirmative action type projects and actually really change the culture to be one of diversity. So those are all things that if you can manage your culture through a CAS platform, you can achieve with human intelligence. I love that approach. I'm actually have a chance to deliver a talk next week on culture in a remote world. And I, I've been thinking about different ways to illustrate that. So this is going to be top of mind for me when I go and tell that story. Speaking of stories, I've heard you from the stage in the past, tell the story of how you use human intelligence for your own 
hiring, right? For your own company as you're, as you're doing your own hiring, drinking your own champagne, as it were. And you realized early on that you had been making some hires in you could see using the tool that you had made the wrong choices. Will you talk a little bit about that early story, how you realize those kind of things and how you adapted and shifted that just to launch us into the broader conversation about how these tools work? Perfect. Yeah. We eat our own dog food at human intelligence. So first let me define what we measure as culture. A lot of people mistakenly think culture are engagement surveys or surveys of execs or people on how happy or sad that they're going to quit. That's actually not culture. People also think that benefits or other things like that are culture. What culture really is, we call it a BMW framework, like the car. It's the behaviors, the motivators, or some people call that values and work styles of a company. And so if you can measure those things and then use the data analytics to roll it up to get culture mappings of a team, of a division, of a whole company across 28 of these elements of, of BMW, you can actually know the culture. So to the case study of our own company, we launched human intelligence six years ago. For the first four years, we were throwing out great innovative products. The reason was, and we knew our culture, we had measured it. We were in terms of B behaviors, very change oriented, okay? Not very cautious or steady. Everybody was extreme change. M, we were very innovative and unique and freedom thinkers, not very service or belonging as a group. And W, the BMW piece, we were extremely creative. We were not very systematic as the way we work. And our psychology as a group, our culture, the way we work led to a very change, innovative, creative company. However, you hit four years in, so two years ago, and we weren't scaling, growing. We weren't, and I saw quickly the problem and like many leaders, Intuitively, I thought, I don't think we have the right culture anymore. It's a different challenge. So we actually built a product to measure the culture of the team, to put a, a kind of roadmap of, you know, and capture what is the right culture. And there was a gap. We were only at 14% index, 14 out of 100 to where we wanted to go. And so we built a tool to allow every team leader, every company to do the same and actually see the gap of where the strategy they need to take is and where the actual culture is. And then with that, you can do two things. And this is what we did at Human Intelligence. You can train and develop the people on your team or your division or your company to be the culture that you want them to be. And I don't mean just say, hey, here's the new t-shirt or coffee mug. This is our new culture, everybody. It's on the website. That, that doesn't work. And it's not bringing in McKinsey or consultants and spending $5 million. It's actually a work development plan for every individual, what their psychology and work styles are and how with tips and ideas to that are very actionable to move them along the path to the culture that's desired or a culture of intention. Secondarily, and just as important, you can then codify that future culture and use it for recruiting and use our talent acquisition for talent fit tool to then filter all applicants for a role or a team to be what you want for that culture, eliminating many of the subjective phone calls and video conferences and face-to-face -face meetings that people just hire who they like. And now you can actually hire what's right for the team. I have been hiring everyone like me for four years. Now it necessitated this new inflection point of the company to change culture, to hire different than me and to hire a different culture. And this tool allowed us to do that. And since then we've really taken off and scaled the company. I love the story because you, not only because you're transparent, right? Not all, even those of us that work in this space, we don't always have it figured out from the very beginning, but we learn from, learn from those mistakes and you were able to adapt, overcome that. And that now becomes a part of the DNA of the company going forward. Right? You realize we've got, hey, th this is our objective for the coming year. Let's make sure that we're aligning those things. We need to come up with some new innovation. Let's make sure that we're doing the, the hiring for that. Or let's look for the team where there's a lot of innovation in that team and use those strengths, those things that people bring to the table to help us achieve those goals. I, I love the story there. One of the things you started out, one of the things you started out by saying though, is this is not just a survey, right? Talk more about how you differentiate yourself from everybody in the world. It feels like who talk about culture in their products. Talk about how you are different from those approaches. Yeah, this one's tough because it's a conceptual discussion, but I'll try. There have been, on one hand, we have a thousand competitors in the assessment space, if not more, right? There are a ton of companies that measure behaviors. You have predictive index, strain finders, plum, pie metrics, caliper, Berkman, right? All the big five, like many products. And they're good. They measure those things, but, and they were built to be self-awareness tools, right? Like, who am I? What are my strengths? My weaknesses, blind spots. 
Then there's some tools that measure motivators or values like Hogan and Lominger. Much more expensive, takes a lot of time, uh, and you need a consultant or a workshop, right? A lot of problems with it. You would never get the data for your whole company, just your execs. So we do both of those, B and M. So that's the psychology piece. So we're already the better mousetrap and that we measure more in a quicker time. However, we also add the piece around the work environment, the W of BMW, because that's important to understand how the environment impacts you. Do you like working in it and get energy from, from a creative environment or a systematic environment? So for example, you could have two people with the same disc or two people with the same Hogan, right? The typical behavior and, and value tools, one miserable, one happy in the same job at the same company. And it's because those tools don't look at how the environment gives you energy. So we do all that in 12 minutes. Nobody else can do it in an hour. Nobody can do it in the same price points. Okay, so there we're different within assessments, but still it's, it's conceptual. And maybe if somebody already has a tool, they might not think ripping it out makes sense. And, and we get that. Now, where we really are different is that we've rolled that data up for the last five years as team culture mappings and give insights for strengths, weaknesses, and blind spots for the team leader. Most of those other assessment tools aren't doing it at the team level, but We've taken it a step further. We've also built a platform, an enterprise-wide platform that's called EQ Everywhere, where they have not been able to copy us because they're actually not enterprise software companies. They're just simple assessment tools that have been digitized. So picture a, a, a two-dimensional black and white picture. We are 3D live, like virtual reality. And as a comparison, we actually infuse emotional intelligence every day, every minute, 24 seven in the workflows for anybody who's about to connect with another person at a company. Whereas the old model and all those other tools typically is you do it, you have a workshop where someone comes in and shares the results, or you have a, a PDF or you have a folder where the info is. In the minute you go out to write an email six months later, you don't use that insight. With our EQ everywhere, you can actually go into your Gmail, your Outlook, and click on the name of someone you're writing to, and it pulls up tips on how to communicate, motivate, influence that person. Or if you're L&D, how to deliver training to that person, okay? If you're in a calendar and you're in your Gmail or Outlook and you're about to go into a meeting physically or remotely, you click on the team, on the calendar invite, and it'll pull up the culture of that meeting. And if you're leading that meeting, who might push back because they're really creative and they don't, they're unique in their perspectives? Who might be really decisive to give the to-do or action item for the next morning to give? And who's really deliberate? Who that would feel, make them feel very uncomfortable? Who thinks like you, who doesn't? If the whole team is very creative and you're a PMO and process improvement person, you, you, it's good to know that you might be very different. Imagine EQ everywhere where you're delivering emotional intelligent insights where every person, every two people can communicate, collaborate, and connect better so that you achieve resonance. So at the end of the day, we're different than anybody in the world who does something like this because we deliver resonance 24 seven in any language for 125 countries. That's seven different languages in a platform on any device. That's where we're different. It's an on-demand EQ Everywhere platform versus a one-in-time high-touch labor expensive tool. Yeah, get your score and we'll just use that forever, right? That, that's not embedded in the work, the flow of work. That's what I love about that piece where it's I'm having a conversation with Juan. I know this is what drives him. This is what motivates him. This is how we can have a better conversation. And it's not about, yeah. it's not like giving up who you are, but it's about just knowing how to get along better with other people. There's actually some fascinating research that came out this year. I've, I just had a conversation about it about an hour ago with someone because it's stuck in my head that they, researchers looked at what made someone likely to be able to make the transition during that hypothetical pandemic situation you mentioned earlier in case that happened. <laughs> and they found it wasn't like introversion. It wasn't diligence or just focus on work. It was someone's agreeableness or being willing to think about others and being willing to adapt your style to others and think about others when you're making decisions and weave them into their needs into the picture. And so I, I, it's interesting. That's the big picture perspective I have of this year. And then we're talking right now about how there are, there are now tools that allow you to understand the people that you're talking to on a deeper level beyond just what their job history is or whatever else, but you understand what drives them, what excites them, why they come to work and why they, if they love their job, you can look at their profile and say, oh, now I know why, right? Because this is driven by X, Y, and Z, and that's key parts of what they do. I think that gives you a really interesting picture of people beyond just, again, beyond the job title, pretty much. Because everybody up until today, Ben, has been, what are your skills? What have you done? And what's your functional title? And what level are you, right? That is just table stakes where companies will advance and create better products and services where everyone will be more engaged, where cultures will vibrate and resonate to where they need to be is where 
everyone has access to these insights at any moment in a cheap on-demand way. The best analogy from our personal lives is for anyone who's been married, I've been married now four years and I met my wife three years prior. So I've known her seven years. There's a huge difference in how I communicate and connect with her and understand her and, and drive to outcomes three, four years in, because I got to the point where I understood what drove her, what her value system is, how she works, her operating. And so imagine at work, if everybody could get along, even if they've never met, like a married couple of seven years, that's what we're delivering to companies throughout the world. And I love that analogy. I'm thinking with how I interacted with my, my now wife of uh, 13 plus years, the first three years, the first three months was radically different than how radically it is now. different. Yes. But imagine this, imagine if you couldn't see your wife, see that person every single day face to face. Like now a lot of people are, some companies are working remote for the foreseeable future and others are some hybrid, some weird mix of those things. And I would make the argument that it's even more important to have those kind of insights with the other people when you can't see them face to face, you've got to understand more about them and you can't get that just from a zoom call or a phone conversation. Exactly. So you talked about a couple different examples and use cases in the conversation. Would you share some of those like here intentionally talk about whether it's in hiring, whether it's in building a team, whether it's in you know, the, the equality angle, diversity angle, talk about some of the use cases and how people are using these to make better decisions, build better relationships so to really focus their culture at work. Sure. I've gone through and given these examples before, so I'll go quickly. But for startups, there's been a mantra that startups often fail and CEOs, when you ask them, oh, why did you fail? They say, I couldn't keep my culture as we grew and hired more people. With our data and our clients that we've learned uh, about this topic, we've, we've learned actually that is a misnomer. It's actually counterintuitive. Just like the example I gave earlier, where we had a very creative, innovative culture, we actually had to change to a more predictive and structured and cautious culture. And so we would have failed if I kept hiring people like myself. So this product, this platform is great for startups that are growing quickly to change their cultures where necessary along the inflection points of, of scaling. That's one great example. Two, hiring faster and reducing turnover, right? Imagine a tool that allows you to get rid of all your phone screens, eliminate the subjectivity that people hire who they like and hiring people who are better for the role in the culture or the team, even though they might be different than the people currently in the team. That's another example where our tool is great. Three, improving diversity, right? We've done webinars and it's probably one of the hotter webinar topics we've done with over 500 participants. Because today everyone realizes that the affirmative action model where you just place minorities or people of color in a power of leadership without changing the culture of the company isn't gonna help avoid that person's downfall because you're not gonna have diverse people reporting into that person nor working with them at a peer and stakeholder level. And so they're gonna ultimately fail. Instead, you need to fix the problem at the cause root, which is the culture of a company that does not have diversity isn't diverse in their thinking. And so a culture management tool, a CAS culture as a service tool like ours allows you to A, manage people and accept people and include them better, no matter what their thinking is and see where you have gaps and pockets where all teams or all people are too similar and where they're not. So it gives you the data to show diagnostically, hey, Houston, we have a problem and here's where those problems are. And then B, train people to understand inclusion and differences are okay in a fun way. And then C, hire for more diverse thinking in every team. That over time will lead to more diversity in every position at every level at a company. Four, remote work context. Again, global pandemic, March 7th, everybody starts going remote. Now it seems like it's gonna be a hybrid model moving forward in 2021. Imagine identifying and diagnosing those employees that would naturally be good at working remote and those employees that would not. Often we worked with call center agents four years ago that were moving away from the big cost structure of big buildings with hundreds of call center agents in them four years ago to a structure where people would work from home given technology. You could have call center agents work from home. What we found and what our clients found in the call center world, which is what companies are finding now across the board, is that some of the best call center agents for five years when they went to work remote from home became the worst. And some of the worst call center agents at work at the offices became the best at home. Our tool allows you to identify 
the tendencies and who potentially would be good and bad working remote, as well as what teams might have higher risk working remote. So it helps individuals and leaders identify, diagnose, and give prescriptions for better action items to work remotely for the psychology that you have and what gives you energy as an employee and part of a team. Five, better resonance. I had mentioned that now, not only could you communicate, connect, and collaborate better. And a lot of companies talk about those three C's. Facebook has this whole mantra about building community through the three C's, communication, connection, collaboration. But that's table stakes. They're missing the beginning. You need to, you for understand. We provide the understanding to allow for better communication, connection, collaboration, leading to an outcome of resonance a higher vibration for the entire organization and every two contact points between people. Six, career mobility. Someone who's not happy somewhere and not working well. We have a woman named Beth Hales at my company, hired her for sales. She thought she wanted to do sales. She had done something similar. Worked three months, called me up on my weekly meeting one day and said, Juan, my mood meter this week is a four. I'm like, what do you mean? You've been a nine for four or five weeks. She said, I'm just not happy. I can't figure it out. We pulled up her assessment scores. And we looked at it and then we looked at the sales team and who was doing well and she wasn't a fit. And we realized, you know what? You're made more for customer success. We are looking to maybe grow that group. Why don't you launch that? And she's now been with us for four months and she's loving her job. Career mobility, using psychometrics to understand where people would be a better fit so that even if they're failing today at your company, move them to the right role where they'll be engaged and where they'll perform. And lastly, we have many companies using our tool for mentor matching. Find people who either add, uh, compliment who you are as you're up and coming in as a leader in a company with a mentor who compliments you or find someone who is similar to you, depending on what you think might work best and have and use that for matching. Those are seven examples of how our clients are leveraging our platform for culture, either measurement, management, and hiring. I love that. I'm probably keep all those in because that was tremendous. I was going to say the, the common thread through all those though, as you're, as you're sharing, you're talking about those examples and things, the common thread is it's like a, in a nutshell of what this year has shown us is that we need to be thinking of people as individuals in terms of the unique strengths that they bring to the table, the things that they, their aspirations, their dreams, their hopes. And this year has shined a light on why we need to be doing that as a business community. And what I love about the examples you're giving there is it allows a company to see people for who they really are, not for how well they write the resume or how well they pay someone else to write the resume or how well they can fake it through a video interview, right? Re-record that for the 27th time, Charlie, but they get actually show what truly drives them, what motivates them, what their strengths are. And then we get to make a choice about which ones best fit the needs of the business right now, today, as, as we're trying to solve what our problems are trying to solve. I love that, that's the common strength there. Ben, what you just said gave me a great uh, insight. Well, thank you. And I'm going to use this moving forward. It allows a company to see the employee and it, it harks back to the Avatar movie, which I'll date myself, where there is that scene where they ride the horse and they look across each other into each other's eyes. And they say, I see you. Mm. This allows the company to see you as an employee. And ironically, Technology applied to human capital management is what we do. A lot of people fear that's going to take the human out of human capital management. Quite contrary, this is a platform that allows companies to put the human back into their company and for people to see each other and to feel and vibrate and resonate with each other. Software leading to a more human environment. Thank you very much, Ben. I'm going to use that moving forward. Hey, Avatar 2 is on the horizon, so don't don't mention <laughs> too much. You're, you're just pre prepping for what's next. Um, Avatar, sponsored by Human Intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I love it. I love it. <laughs> the point you made there about the technology and enabling us to create more human experiences at work, has that was one of the big themes in my book. That's one of the big themes that I've talked about for the last probably 18 months that came out is it seems like a paradox, doesn't it? And you admitted that a minute ago to use tools, to use tech, to use software, to try to create more human experiences. But put it this way, if you are the world's best leader, your team really well, you understand what motivates them. You've got good insight into how to recognize them for their strengths and how to use them on projects. There's a physical limit to how much you can know about people. And as your team grows, you're going to start losing touch with those things about the people. 
And there's just, there's no way around that. Again, human, there's no human way around that. So having a tool to help that help with that enables great leaders to be even better. And it allows those managers that have always said, well, I just don't know enough about my team to, to really do those things. That's not an excuse anymore. Now they do know what drives their teams. They do know what, what Sarah needs versus Danny versus, they know those things. And there's no excuse now for not treating them the way they need to be treated based on those things that make them unique. Okay. Goodness gracious. My mind's a whirling over here, as you can tell. <laughs> I can't stop it. So would you be willing to share a story, a, a customer case study, an example of someone that's using this? I'd love to hear like a real life story, if you don't mind, about someone that's seeing some of these results. We've talked about some cool stories and examples so far. Do you have one to share? Yeah, probably the biggest impact we've had is around large companies with huge turnover issues. That's where the direct ROI comes out instantly and gets paid back within three months. So Ashley Furniture is the largest manufacturing company for furniture in the U.S. They have 20,000 people and about 12 manufacturing sites, if I recall well, across the U.S. And they also have about 10,000 people in stores. Now, granted, they've been hit by COVID like many manufacturers and retailers. Their business is struggling right now, but they are coming back. That said, for 2019, pre-COVID, the example is pretty stark. They had been hiring people for 10 years. And unfortunately, not leveraging technologies, uh, and because for, until we came around, there really wasn't a scalable way to filter with psychometrics. And so they actually would have 100% turnover. They would lose 20,000 people a year of 20,000. Now, there were some people who stayed, so they would hire several thousand, more than 20, but, but they'd, they'd always have 100% turnover. And so they did a test with us for three months. And in that test, they did their process of hiring. They also gave every employee, every employee, every applicant who walked into the manufacturing shop floor, they had them take on a tablet, the 10 to 12 minute human intelligence assessment. And they weren't going to use our results for those three months in the test. They wanted to see which did better, the human intelligence tool or their process. And then they had been skeptic of many assessment tools and that rightly so, because most of the cheaper assessment tools only measure behaviors and you need to understand behaviors and the M and W, motivators and work styles, to really get true insights, just behaviors isn't enough. And so they had thought our best employees who do stay, we pay them a lot of money. So they always interview for people who are focused on pay for performance in their value system. Money's important. And their manufacturing lines are really fast and move quickly. And so they've always thought logically that people who are really extreme decisive would be the ones they should interview for and hire. And then thirdly, that was a behavior. So we have one value, one motivator, one behavior. And then thirdly, they thought that people who were independent would be people who would not only move quicker and, and be focused on money, but would be right. And so that's what they were filtering for in their process, which made sense all these years. Our tool found something different. Our tool found that it was actually people who did not care about money at all people who were very belonging and service oriented in their motivations and people who were deliberate and actually made in their behavioral psychology, they made decisions very thoughtfully and reflectively. Why is that? Guess what? The, they have a batch performance process, a batch production process with teams. They switch the teams often. And so it was the team oriented belonging and service people who actually worked better together on new teams all the time, not independent people. And it was actually people who took their time to make decisions, even if it was a fast process, being reflective and deliberate was better. Those people had less defects, ended up being kept and getting more bonuses, therefore making more money. It had nothing to do with interest in money. They had been hiring wrong. Our tool showed that where the 9,000 people they hired in those three months on the pilot, 3,000 were fired, 3,000 were great and were kept and 3,000 they did not hire based on their interviews. Our tool showed that they would have kept 95% of the high performers that they kept. Our tool would have just, they used our tool, would have avoided about 85% of the people who failed that they fired. And of the third group, of ones they didn't even hire, 75% would have been high performers if they'd used our tool. They used our tool in 2019, the whole year, and they reduced turnover by I believe 30% and by an estimated $4.6 million in cost savings. That is the power of human intelligence and of understanding the culture of performance in a manufacturing environment, for instance, with high turnover and, and low wage employees. That's an incredible story. Wow. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate I always I love a good story anyway, but ones that have a happy ending and also just to shed a light on the fact that 
especially for a manufacturing operation and some industry specifically, you talk about call centers earlier, things like that. We expect that turnover is just going to be a cost of business that we always put up with. Right. And there is always going to be some, yes, absolutely. But it, we don't have to just resolve, you just give up and say, okay, it's going to be 50%. It's going to be 80%. It's going to be whatever percent forever. We, if we can make some impact on that, and as you've shown, there are ways to make an impact on that, to reduce that. And so thank you for sharing that story. I really enjoyed and, and, that. And there's one more point I'd like to mention. This is also an inflection point for HR and HR leaders in that function. It used to be that HR was a personnel administration and a cost center. It then became where they were managing people and processes more, and they got a seat at the table. But if you looked or surveyed CEOs and they said, which of your lieutenants direct reports really drive profit, they would look at the PL leaders, the CFO. However, for the first time with a tool like ours, this is an ROI generating function. HR for the first time is an ROI driving, driving function. And so the CHRO of Ashley Furniture saved them $4.6 million. She can now go and do the same type of thing in any business unit and say, hey, I wanna drive performance and drive profit through understanding the culture of each group. This is something very new and it's really radical where CHROs are going to be more business minded and, and look at things from an ROI perspective and not see software as just a cost center. I'm with you on that for sure, because in terms of the profitability of the business, the, the biggest expense for any company is gonna be their people. And at the same time, I mentioned a minute ago, right? We've assumed that for a long time, we don't have much control over that. We look at other areas for efficiency or, or for cutting costs, things like that. And we don't think about, if we can cut that, that turnover in, in half in their story, like Ashley Furniture story, $4 million plus saved. And that, that, could, that could continue forever, right? That continues to pay them dividends over time if they keep those people. Because not only are they not turning over, they're also high performers. They're people who are doing good work, better work than just a, a person that is hanging around for a paycheck. So there's more benefits than just not losing people. And it's, it's so fun to see see that impact at that level, but also at the kind of leadership level, like you're talking about there, right? the CEO coming to HR because they see them as a, as a true partner of the business and not just handle the compliance, handle the, the people junk that we don't want that's hampering us from our, our objectives and our goals as a company. Interesting story. Love that. So if someone is curious, has enjoyed hearing this, like I know they have, how can they get in touch or learn more about human intelligence? Yeah, so they can visit the website, humanintelligence.com, and that's two words combined. It's human intelligence, but you get rid of the I-N in the middle. So humanintelligence.com. We also have a website for remote work called remoteworkscorecard.com. So either of those two locations, they can find more information. We'd be happy to do a demo for free of the platform and do a free team culture mapping for uh, a group of up to 15 people. Just reach out to humanintelligence.com and, and we'll set, set, set them up. Wonderful. Juan, I'll make sure you get those in the show notes, but I just want to thank you. This has been I knew it was going to be a good conversation. You and I have had these discussions before and in other forums and formats, and I was so glad to, to bring you here on the podcast. So thank you for joining me. Ben, thank you. And I just want to, I want to just close out by saying one last thing, and, and that is that I appreciate you, Ben. And, and let me tell you why. One, your expertise makes you a visionary in the world of human capital management and in the future of work. And two, your kindness and selflessness has made you a portal for the other thought leaders like myself and many others I've heard on your podcast to express themselves and their ideas and for the masses of the HR related tribe to learn and grow. And for that, I really wanted to thank you, Ben. I am so thankful I'm not on video so no one can see the, the red cheeks here. So <laughs> I appreciate that, sir. I appreciate it very much. To everybody else out there, I hope you enjoyed this conversation today with Juan from Human Intelligence. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch you next time on We Are Only Human. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. I'm honored to have you as a listener. If you enjoyed this episode, please take 10 seconds to rate it at iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcast. Also, if you know a friend that could benefit from today's conversation, please pass it their way. After all, a rising tide lifts all ships. To see show notes, sponsor information, and our full show archives, visit OnlyHumanShow.com. 